Hello YouTube, Liverpool fan in Japan here, the Miyazaki man, Sai. So that was unexpected, right? Leaves our season in tatters, our Europa League campaign on the brink. But however, this is always the way Liverpool done it, right? We never, never take the easy route. We always take the most complex, heart-wrenching route. As I said in the title, we are the masters of masochism. Whether it's Liverpool, whether it's Klopp's Liverpool, whether it's just Liverpool in general or football in general, I don't know. Maybe other fan bases experiences too. But 3-0 isn't the worst result in the world, considering that they could have scored five. Then again, we could have scored three to five as well. So, end of the day, Gasparini done us in. Man marking mode, Klopp had no answer. We started rough. We started absolutely rough. Anfield had no flags pre-planned because of the season ticket prices. Maybe we'll do a video on that in a, another day. 2% under inflation, but then again, it's already as expensive as it is. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the ticket prices as well. I don't know. There's no clear answer to that, but it is some analysis to be done. However, I will start on a somewhat positive note with some positive comments as well, because some people actually look to this channel to invigorate them, to get the heads up, to cheer you guys up after terrible performance. So there are one or two positives that you can actually draw out from this result. Now, one of them is the fact that sometimes our football is a little bit boring. Van Dijk to Canate, Canate to Gomez, Gomez to Van Dijk, out wide, bring it in again until you see the opportunity to probe and off you go with a long ball. Possession-based football until an opportunity, right? That does consume a bit of time. You're probing, probing until that trigger point to release the ball. Come next week when we're away at Atalanta, we got to go for it for minute one. There won't be messing around, time wasting. We need to get a foot on the ball, get the ball in the net, and from there we go. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Rev it up, rev it up, and go for it. Gung ho, get the ball, get the goals. It's got to be that kind of 50 50 chance where it doesn't matter. Game game pressing, heavy metal football right in their face. Go for it. You lose 5 0, you lose 5 0. We win 7 0, we win 7 0. We win 7 2. Doesn't matter. Go, go, go and let the football gods decide the quality and if we can get the ball in the net if we're clinical then it matters it can't be that probing probing five minutes gone probing probing seven minutes gone we made the chance we didn't get it be defensively tight for sure you've got to be responsible as well you've got to retain the ball you've got to recycle the ball you've got to turn over the ball when they've got the ball get it and in their face and pressure and go 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 high intensity full motivation no lackadaisical non-enthusiasm or, or boring kind of ball retainment you've got 90 minutes to turn it around 90 minutes plus injury time Sure. However, limited time. Turn it around, get your boots, scoring boots on, get the goal, off you go. So that will at least be an exciting match Liverpool will go for. And those people who say, throw away the match, concentrate on the league. The league is not guaranteed anyway. And when has Liverpool ever, ever thrown away a European fixture? We can come back from free. They scored free. Why can't we score free? Of course, we've scored many, many goals on historic comebacks in, in the past, right? When we need it against Olympiacos, Gerard, cushion header for Gerard. When we need it against Barcelona, Origi, quick. Corner taking quickly to Origi, that kind of thing, right? It's Ace Milan, one of my best nights, top five nights of all time. Istanbul, May 2005, Rafa de Gaffa, Gerard, Smitza, Alonso, penalties, Dudek, right? We can do it. Of course we can do it. But then again, we need to play our way into form, momentum and rhythm because, because momentum is a very, very fragile thing. So you need to rev yourself and, and get yourself into gear and really, really go for it from, from minute one. So there'll be no passengers. And if anyone doesn't perform, they're off, put the sub on, get them on and, and get the job done. So at least it'll be an exciting match, probably a high scoring match. That's one thing to look forward to. And the other thing to look forward to as well is in this final hurdle, sometimes pressure plays an interesting role. You know you've got a limited time left with Jurgen Klopp. You want to win it for Klopp. It's pressure too much. We kind of slipped up a little bit against Man United, right? Let Arsenal back in, in the race as well. We're now in the chasing pack. Form hasn't been as outstanding. We haven't led well from the front. We haven't blasted away teams. We haven't dominated the, the lower league teams that we were expected to dominate as well, right? Sometimes the pressure and the cauldron and the long season and the tiredness in the legs and the energy and the infusion enthusiasm can get you but it's a result like this that wakes you up and say well, hang on a minute we just got absolutely trashed at our home three nil all is not well the players of character the leaders in the group will react and respond to this they absolutely have to and then we'll see which of these guys are real liverpool caliber players and what they can do between now and the end of the season sometimes you need a shock result like this to kick yourself in the ass and get yourself revved up and going again because it's not just depressing and, and disappointing but you're angry it makes you angry somewhat and sometimes anger can be channeled in the right way and allow you to just go for it and hey i tried there's at least two positives right so yeah let's carry on <laughs> however let's look at the game gasparini going man for man so the thing about gasparini is he is a really really good italian coach i, I read a statistic as well scamacca is the first italian to score two goals at anfield does that count liverpool players as well balotelli barini aquilani dosena i'm sure some good players have come up here Gianfranco Zola, I'm sure Vieri's come up here a few times, Del Piero, 
is Kamaka the first one? Let me know in the comments below. I don't know. I need to do research on that. But yeah, <laughs> if Kamaka's done it before Barini or Balotelli, and yeah, fair play to him. Anyway, Gasparini is the type of manager who really needs dominance and control over every aspect of the club. And he is no nonsense, absolutely his way or the highway. Um, I, I really, really think that he suits Atalanta because they give in to all his demands and he's got them playing well. And there's a big rotational shift of players. Atalanta bring huge amount of players in and huge amount of players out. And I think one of the lesser teams play in Serie C as well. So they've got a good funnel there and a good place to develop youngsters as well. And a lot of players have come from... Didn't Rasmus Hoyland come from Atalanta as well? Yeah. Anyway... I digress somewhat. I think um, they are underdogs. They're not absolutely flying high in, in Serie A, but on their given day, they can destroy anybody. But on the given day as well, they can be defeated. I think we've beat them 5-0 on a previous encounter, but I think defensively, they are quite solid. So it's going to be difficult. But one thing that's very, very demotivating about this particular fixture is that when we went 3-0 down at Barcelona, right? Obviously, we had Anfield return leg to come. But we played amazingly well. Our leaders, our experienced players, stood up to the four. We should have got a Mo Salah late goal right at the end of it. But then Usman Dembele could have scored a late goal for them as well. Can't believe he missed that one. Ugh, shocking. But anyway, yeah, we played and probably deserved a 3-3 draw in our first leg. With this particular tie, we deserve nothing. I don't know why, but the players just were not at it. Simikas had a bit of a shocker, unfortunately. Van Dijk and Konate were cha chasing shadows. The front players of Atalanta rotated so well. It always seemed really apparent that Coop Miners kept getting a ball on the lash, on the run. Ball to him, and he's just running, and where's, where's the guy marking him? Konate, chasing shadows, Van Dijk pulled to different directions, but they, they weren't the biggest problem here, and Simicast didn't have a great game, albeit. Joe Gomez, so word on Gomez as well. Apart from the fact that Cueve could have done better, but then again he saved some, especially with his face, right? Mixed bag performance by Cueve, but nothing could have really done. We Considering the amount of shots we had, they had more shots on target than us, which is a bad metric in itself. But we've designed the whole system to invert a right back or left back, Joe Gomez either side, into the central midfield six pivot with Trent Alexander-Arnold being absent. Because Trent in that position really offers an attacking threat and expands the pitch and allows us to transition the pinpoint of attack to any any place at any given moment, right? And he can play the quarterback, he can play the, the six, he can play the half space. But when Trent is out, which then having Gomez in it introduces an extra shield alongside Wataru Endo to close up shop, but also short ball passing game because Gomez is decent, fairly decent. Getting the ball, shifting the ball making the play continue, right? However, it was a clear ploy by Atalanta to give Gomez the ball constantly because they know he's not going to break the lines with a forward ball. He's not going to break the lines with a ball over the top. He's not going to shift out wide, change momentum and tempo like a Thiago Alcantara. He is limited in his ball playing skills, but he's a good metronome to keep the ball moving. But keeping ball moving isn't good enough. When you go goal down, two goals down, three goals down, and continuously, we kept getting Gomez the ball over and over again. And even in desperation, he shot for like 30, 40 yards. The fan base is definitely not helping in the stadium because shouting to shoot, great. If Gomez gets a goal, fantastic. What if it's like a, a goal, a consolation goal and a 4-1 defeat or something? That's no good. Literally, he should be progressing the ball to someone with a higher chance. And I'd like Gomez to score a tap-in, not a screamer. For his first goal, just get the easy goal. You don't need the small percentage profile type shots that really, you know, one in a million Vincent company. Unfortunately, I want to bring that up. But yeah, you really don't need that unless, you know, we're comfortably 2-3-0 no up. When we're chasing a game, you need to play the percentage plays because that's what gets you the opportunity to get back in the game. Talking about the finishing, right? Darwin Nunes, the more I see of Darwin Nunes, he's still the agent of chaos. His movement is great. He gets into great positions. He'll occupy the defence. His presence on the pitch makes us play better. You can't criticise him too much because this is the player that you get with Darwin Nunes. In some ways, now this is a horrible comparison. He's a bit like Lukaku. Lukaku probably has every finish in the book. Darwin Nunes has every type of finish in the book. But the shot choices and the moment of instinct and the moment that it matters, a lot of times he chooses the wrong one or the nonchalant one or he fluffs it. Right, he's not the clinical finisher that you'd imagine that just gets the ball in the net by hook or by crook, a Diogo Jota, a Robbie Fowler, an Inzaghi, a Chikorito, that kind of thing. Darwin Nunes will score a lot of goals because of his physical prowess, his technical ability, and he is a top tier striker that's got huge goal expectancy and he's got lots of goals and assists this season as well. But he'll never be the type that you can rely on constantly, constantly when you get that one shot in a match, be confident that he will put it away. It's a similar kind of concept as Mo Salah taking the penalty now. Just not 100% confident they'll put it away unless you've got a McAllister taking the penalty, for example, or Diogo Jota for a goal, right? But you can't blame him. He is our ace striker, our lead striker. We play better with him on the pitch. He needs to be on the pitch. And this is the type of game you're going to get every now and again. But I did say, put your faith in Cody Gakpo. He will come good. And Cody Gakpo on the left-hand side, on the left wing, looks more natural. He shows energy. He really wanted it from the first minute. He was chasing. He was harassing. He's got good ultimate speed, but not great acceleration. So he can shift the gears and get in there, kind of like a Sobersly as well. 
but he looked a lot more comfortable knowing what to do in the timing, when to come inside and join in the play as well and try to get across or a shot on the way. Um, so he he is more useful, I'd say, on the left-hand side. He can play up front centrally as well, um, but I don't really want to see him on the right-hand side. He's not really a midfielder, and Klopp alluded to the fact that his um, confidence got shattered a bit in, in the midfield. And speaking of, of Jurgen Klopp, I don't know, it's a little bit confusing, the mixed messages here. So Klopp designs the style of play, but he put in the personnel, he put in Simicas, he put in Gakpo, he put in Harvey Elliott. Now sometimes, sure, it's a rotational match at Anfield, the Anfield factor, you're expecting to boost us through, but we knew Anfield was going to be a little bit reticent, a little bit quiet because of that issue of the ticket prices, no flags, no banners, and apparently the match atmosphere was really really quiet as well which is surprising it is a european night forget champions league always back to team no matter what if you're privileged enough to see anfield shout till you can shout no more sing the songs then are overall disappointed if that's true but klopp really didn't change the game plan they gave joe gomez the ball in the middle he couldn't break through the lines. They played man for man. We found it hard to shift out of that. So many other teams played this kind of system to disrupt us, especially the ball players like Van Dijk and, and Endo and, and McAllister, but we know what they can do. And McAllister was on the, the kind of margins of, of the game. We really need to get him more involved in the game. When Sobosai gets his foot on the ball, somehow he doesn't shift the ball quick enough. He, he's got all the technical attributes and technical acumen to do lots and lots of great things, but he Sometimes his decision making is a little bit slow or not as incisive enough. You can't fault his energy, you can't fault his determination or his desire. But I don't see the heat of the moment really turning on and using everything he's got to change the tempo or change the momentum uh, with an incisive run or an incisive pass straight away. He kind of needs time on the ball before he does something. And yeah, maybe he just needs to play his way into form. I don't know, is he burnt out from early seasons? But really, you know, it's McAllister that's one that's always probing and probing. Even Endo, when he gets on the ball, tries to probe and probe. And I think if Soboslai had this kind of desire to get on the one, we go, we go, it might do him the world of good because sometimes play and the pass and even the cross sometimes, it's slowed down just a margin too much to, to really affect the opposition, if you know what I mean. And additionally, on the right-hand side, Harvey Elliott always probes and plugs away, and that shot was so unlucky, crossbar, and, and then, then a post as well, right? And he's always probing and going for it as well. The only ones that really come out of credit, I'd say, is McAllister, um, Harvey Elliott uh, as well, and, and Gakpo, right? Lucho Diaz is, I don't think he's the most game intelligent football on a technical level and on a dribbling level he is absolutely world elite but in terms of intelligence and, and link up play and final goal metric contribution in terms of the assist order goals he's very very flaky very very inconsistent and i don't know whether you can trust him as your atypical game winning right which used to be mo salah but mo salah's touch has deserted him somewhat and his finishing just isn't there at the moment he looks a bit desperate to get that goal tally up. I don't know when it's final season, but if it is final season, the the kind of figures are bandied around, you know, the 70 million, the 80 million, nowhere near the 150 million. You're not going to get over 100 million, I don't think, at this stage, with his contract winding down a year older and not in the best of form as well. Um, it's, it's a very difficult position, and we'll make a separate video about transfers and what I think Liverpool should do, opposed to what Liverpool I think will actually do. That'll be an interesting comparison, right? Um, it just wasn't a cohesive performance. Klopp didn't do anything to turn around the tempo and Klopp plays in a specific way. He intimated in the interview as well, that offside goal where you slide it across for Salah in the back to slot it in. That is a very atypical Liverpool goal. I don't see enough of the well-worked goal from the byline pulling it back for a tap-in or, or that kind of play anymore. It's been very conservative and building up to particular situations in the offensive half spaces. Just, I don't know. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work and it doesn't look pretty. And when our finishing is not on point, we don't have a plan B to, to adjust and, and to change to. And he, and he did try to change things at half time, but yet we played even worse, right? We played even worse because two goals conceded after the break and we could have conceded more. We were another Skamaka header and, you know, 1v1s that were absolutely shocking and overall a bad day at the office. You can't hide it. You can't hide behind anything. You've got a few positives that you can draw out, like I mentioned at the start of the video. However, Everyone has these bad days. Sure, one of the worst performances under Klopp's tenure, one of the worst performances that I can remember. They went in cocky, they went in a little bit to, to relax, mistakes creeping into our game as well. This is not what you want in the title run-in, but it's now that the champion has to dust himself off, off the canvas, pick your heavy laden body back up, the sweat dripping off your face, off you go to Crystal Palace and do Palace in, because without doing Palace in, well, season crumbling very, very fast. However, Saying that, if we do beat Palace, we're still top of the table, back on top of the league, and Arsenal have to host Aston Villa, and Aston Villa don't bend over for anybody. Especially Unai Emery must have some scars and wounds open from the uh, Arsenal tenure there. Good evening. <laughs> so, we hope that Aston Villa can do us a favour. Them seeing Liverpool perched at the top, Arsenal crumbling under the, the pressure, wilting, maybe 
Champions League will have an effect because both are finely balanced. Man City, Real Madrid 3-3, Bayern Munich, Arsenal 2-2. Perhaps they go head-to-head -head in there. Perhaps they get demoralised by being knocked out as well. Lots and lots of things to happen this season. We had a terrible, terrible result. No dressing it up, but show must go on. Lots of matches coming thick and fast. I'll be there to cover them all. Really entertaining. I love watching Liverpool play, even if they played absolutely dreadful yesterday. They're still my team, and I'm still backing them. I think we'll come good. I think we will be right in there. We have a chance to turn it around and yeah i will do the atlanta preview next time but in terms of crystal palace i really want us to go right right at them obviously kelleher might be pressured now that allison is back in training van dyke Konate still our best best pairing i think kwanza needs a bit of time out of the limelight trent might come in but i i don't really want Connor bradley to come in because he hasn't really put a step wrong bradley Robertson, maybe Gomez needs a breather after the last match. Endo will be escaping the uh, suspension for accumulated yellow cards in the next match. He would have escaped them. Does he need a rest? Probably not, but he facilitates McAllister to do his damage up front. So Endo, McAllister, Sobosai, Curtis Jones. And this is a very interesting conundrum here. Sobosai really, really needs to show that he's an essential member of the Liverpool team, not just a third cog in an Endo McAllister midfield tr Trump from Perham. So Curtis Jones, Sobosai could go either way. They even Harvey Elliott perhaps on the right hand side. McAllister has been playing right side at eight. Lucho Diaz, very hit and miss, but we still need a Mercurial talent that got us that crucial goal to bring us back in the tie versus Palace previously. Do you remember that one? Wonder goal. Um, yeah, Gakpo Nunes, I think we still look better with Nunes on the pitch overall, even if he does miss chances and Mo Salah comes in. But this, I think Mo Salah's really got to play his way into form because at least Elliot really hustles and bustles and was just a bit unlucky there. Mo Salah, we're going to need him to come to form towards the end of the season, otherwise we just won't win anything. So Salah, Nunes, Lucio Diaz, Sobosly, McAllister, Endo, Van Dijk, Konate, Kelleher, Connor Bradley, and Robertson to start off with. Jota de Slaughter, who is very, very good coming off the bench. And don't forget, don't always clamour for him to start straight away. He was a magical weapon off the bench that just goes right for the throat and gets you the crucial goal. I'd love him to start as well, but I don't want him to get re-injured. So if we're well ahead, don't risk him too much. We need Jota for the extended run-in. That final 10-game period, however long it stretches, if we can qualify for the Europa. Next round, great. It'd be a semi-final. Come on, we can do it against Atlanta, right? Show what you're made of, Klopp. El Kloppo and the team. Like, if you enjoyed this video, I, I know everyone's a bit saddened come to the end of the week but we will be top of the table having beaten Palace hopefully fingers crossed and Arsenal looking at the mire of us stunningly sitting up there we'll crumble again Aston Villa fingers crossed Una Emery good evening subscribe if you haven't already lots of content coming up Miyazaki Manichiban and after a result like that I need a bit of comfort food so I've got a spicy mutton curry Nepalese Indian fusion with a with a Sikh kebab as well mutton and chicken <laughs> with chopsticks Janet